you don't find very much in your textbooks in school about the contribution of women to science, engineering, and technology. My quote on the card is by Madame Curie. And uh, my science and my technology was very much um, following in her vein. In fact, uh, I was offered a Fulbright that I didn't accept. But I would have been the first to occupy Madame Curie's lab after it, the radiation had cooled down enough to uh, be occupied. As you might know, she and her husband lost their lives because of radiation. They didn't know what they were playing with, as many of us do. There's a risk in science and technology, but we won't deal with that. What I want to do is just to say a little bit about the Electret microphone. Uh, what we did was to form an electrical analog of a permanent magnet. Okay, permanent magnet will attract metallic, uh, ferromagnetic magnetic material. <clears throat> but if I were to isolate an electron and hold it between my fingers right here and turn it loose, what is, what is it going to do? It's going to find the nearest hole, right? Because nature likes to be balanced. Well, what we've learned to do is to put electrons in deep traps in polymers. And those traps close up on those electrons and they hold them. But the field from the, the, the electrons is emitted. And, and that can act in the same way as if you had a 500 volt battery. Okay? You can't draw the current from it, but a condenser microphone doesn't need a current. It just needs a bias. Okay? Now, condenser microphones have been around since 1917, also invented at Bell Labs, where I did my work by E.C. Wente, and he was looking for a replacement for the carbon microphone, which was very garbly in, in, in the telephone. Your voice was very raspy. And wanted a linear microphone. Well, he made the most linear microphone in the world, but it required a 500-volt battery. And how do you put a 500-volt battery in a telephone? It's not very practical. The advent of the Electret made condenser microphones practical and applicable. If you've got a cell phone, almost anything that you've talked to, including what I'm talking to today, is based on, on uh, my technology. Um, there are 2 billion Electret microphones made each year, which means that, and it's been done so since 2007, and there are only 7 billion people on Earth, so where are they? Right. Most of us have two, three, four, five of them because they're in, uh, in so many devices and toys. Now what I want to do is to talk about contributions of people of color to science and technology. I want you to know that this is not only my concern, but it's the concern of the President of the United States of America. He realizes that women and minorities uh, underrepresented in the sciences. And um, this is just a graph that shows that, uh, that uh, underrepresented minorities at about 26% of the population of this country, but only about 5% of the STEM workforce. Women are 51% of, uh, of the population, but only 17% of the STEM workforce. You see, there's a big gap here that has to be filled, and it has to be filled by young people. The president realizes that not only minorities and women, but not enough people, period, are entering the field of science and technology. And I'll ask you one question. What can you do today without technology? Very little. So as I tell my children, even if you're going to be a musician, Learn all the science that you can, especially because you, if, if you just think about it, without loudspeakers and microphones, we'd have to go back to what the Greeks did and build amphitheaters that hold roughly a thousand people. And people were so far away that they had to wear head masks in order so that the characters could be identified. Many years ago, uh, before the advent of modern transportation, uh, and, and archaeologists visited Africa where elephants and, and, um, and uh, horses were the only means of transportation. And they went from one village to the other. 
And uh, when uh, they left the village, traveled a whole day and arrived at the, at the next village, they were very surprised. They traveled as fast as anybody possible. But when they got there, even special diets were known. How many people in, in his entourage were, were accommodated? There he learned about talking drums. And talking drums are uh, rhythmic, of course, as all drums are, but the Africans learned to shift the pitch of the voice to frequencies that traveled very far in air, right? Now, this is physics, right, that they learned, probably observing elephants, because elephants can communicate over many kilometers with, uh, with very low frequencies. And so this is how they did that. My daughter, who has a program in, in Chicago to talk about science and technology to people, one of the kids in, in, in the audience that I gave this talk says, Dr. West, that must have been the first cell phone. And absolutely right, because there were repeaters. They knew how far the voice would travel. They'd set up a repeater at that point, and this got repeated precisely the way a cell phone works. The Nubians, again, archaeology, during the construction of the uh, Aswan Dam, uh, when the breadth of the, Nile, of the Nile River was two miles, the Nubians taught the archaeologists how to lean over the water, talk no louder than I am, and transmit a message across the Nile River two miles wide and get an answer back. It's some time delay. But what the Nubians had discovered is that there's a lossless duct between the smooth surface of the water and the ear where sound transmits very, very, very easily. We only are able to explain that in the 20th century, but the Nubians knew about it many, many years ago. Native Americans, the same thing with talking drums. But in, during slavery, um, black families were not allowed to be together. They were put together to mate, then they were split apart, their children were sent somewhere else. And usually in, in adjacent um, uh, um, plantations. And so they fashioned spirituals in a manner that they could bury messages to be able to communicate across the boundaries of plantations to keep up with their families. The Cubans and, and uh, did the same thing. And, and, and the Cuban history is really very interesting because the government knew what was going on and made drums illegal. And so the Cubans fashioned drums in all sorts of forms that you'd never be able to imagine where they would not be able to do that. And here's an interesting one. Recording instruments are modern technology, right? It's only been around since the 30s or so where you could get a record that you could listen to. Yet, in Chichen Itza, the, the Mayans worship the kuklakan, which is a bird that has a very special chirrup. They fashion the pyramid and the steps of the pyramid so that if you stand in front of that pyramid and clap your hands, what you get back is a chirrup of the kuklakan. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the first recording instrument that we've been able to uncover so far. The National Inventors Hall of Fame is, and I'm choosing this because I want to talk about some of the uh, underrepresented minority inductees into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, this is a very unique club. There are only about 400 inductees uh, from all over the world into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and I really feel lucky as being one of those 400. But there are 17 of a black, 19 in another month, two more are being inducted, and I believe three more women are being inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. So it's nowhere near where it should be, but we are making progress. But the most important part is that considering that to, in order to be considered for induction into the Inventors Hall of Fame, your patent has had to have a profound effect on the life of people. Uh, the incandescent lamp should not read Thomas Edison. It should read Thomas Edison and Louis Latimer because Louis Latimer taught how to cure tungsten that improved his, uh, that improved Edison's light bulb from a flashlight, from a flash bulb like on your camera to an incandescent light. Granville T. Woods 
is another prolific inventor who's invented many, many, uh, had many, many very important in inventions. But one of the main things that he did was to invent a microphone. And his microphone he sold to Alexander Graham Bell. And the first microphone in the telephone was the carbon microphone based on Granville T. Woods' invention, only to be replaced by my invention. So you see from the standpoint of telephony, anyway, modern telephony, if it had not been for the two of us, who knows where we'd be. Uh, you know, I'm sure that nothing stays in a vacuum and something, someone will always invent something. This is the reason that we work so hard. I want all of you here to promise to find a mentor and be a mentor, right? And to be a mentor means that the, a student in the class below you, you can teach them an awful lot. The student in the class above you can teach you an awful lot. And this chain progresses. When I was lucky enough to, to be employed at Bell Labs, the first person that I met was Lincoln Hawkins. And, I, and Link said to me, I can teach you how to get through the system if you're interested. And I said, absolutely, I'm very interested. But who is Lincoln Hawkins? Many, many years ago, all the cables for both power and energy and, and communications were sheathed with lead. Okay, lead, we all know how dangerous it is and how poisonous it is. But above that, squirrels love lead. And so many of the employees in, in, in AT&T, the communication system, were people who went around patching the holes that squirrels uh, add, uh, ate into lead. Link Hawkins learned to cure polyethylene so it wouldn't degrade under the irradiation of the sun. He's also inducted into the Hall of Fame. And his patents are considered some of the most money-saving patents ever, a black man. Um, I usually pair this with Jackie Robinson because they both started at the same time, uh, about 1945. Many people know Jackie Robinson, but very few people know Lincoln Hawkins. Gareth Morgan, the traffic light. But even more important, Gareth Morgan invented a gas mask. He couldn't sell his gas mask because it was invented by a black man and nobody trusted anything that was invented by a black man until there was an, uh, uh, an explosion in a tunnel under Lake Erie and many people were, were trapped. Uh, Gareth Morgan donned his gas mask, his brother and whoever else would follow, went and pulled all of those people out. He had no problem selling his gas masks after that, but what he had to go through to prove it is amazing. Elijah McCoy was an oiler on the railroad, meaning that at that time the train had to stop and he had an oil can and he had to go around and squirt all of the bearings and all of the wheels on, on the train. He was able to save enough money and along with the support from his, his father to send him to engineering school. But no school in this country would accept him, so he had to go to England to go to engineering school. And he came back with his diploma and presented it to the railroad. And the railroad said, gave him his oil can back. But that didn't stop Elijah McCoy. He put himself and all other oilers out of business by inventing a, an automatic coupler that would oil the bearings in the, uh, in, in the train, right? And there he, he became famous. Um, all of you have PC, but how many of you knew that a PC was in, really invented by a black man? Nobody, right? But it really was, because this guy here is the inventor of the processor that makes personal computers possible. One very famous one is Mark Hanna, uh, 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 Jurassic Park. Uh, he was one of the co-founders of Silicon Graphics. And uh, they, the, the graphics made it possible for movies like Jurassic Park to be done. This just shows you some of the universities in this country that have faculty, underrepresented minority faculty. And so it, when you plan to go to school, to college, it's a good thing to look at the faculty. And there are pictures in most uh, schools that will tell you, and, and pick a university that has either 
a female or an underrepresented minority somewhere in the system because you might need them. And thank you very much.